Thank you so much for joining us. I mean, this is quite alarming uh, for if we don't understand exactly what it entails. So perhaps can you just start by explaining to us what exactly is Legionella and what does it do? So yes, um, we do want to emphasize that this is not meant to be alarmist. Um, it is an organism. It's one of numerous organisms that causes pneumonia. Um, it occurs very regularly in our water systems, um, and it does attack people who have low immunity. So if you have good immunity, you are very unlikely to become sick. But we do see it um, presenting itself in international uh, reports at old age homes, for instance, or um, if anyone is sick, it might influence you. Um, so it does cause pneumonia. It um, presents itself in our water sources, and it comes in our water sources um, it cannot infect us by drinking water. It infects only by inhalation. So it's only by small droplets or steam in the air. If you breathe it in, it lands on your lungs and it might attack your immune system through what we call macrophages in your lungs. So if you have a low immunity, you might get sick from this. And we looked at the engineering side of this, which I presume we'll be talking about. So you mentioned how we can get infected by this and that also a, a low immune system plays a major part in, in contracting this. But can you just talk us through how we can minimize the risk of getting um, this? Yes. So, so Legionella, as I said, presents itself in our water sources. It's a very common part of the general what we call microbiome, all organisms in a water source. Um, and we do also want to emphasize that our water is very clean. So, um, but what happens is a few of these organisms might come into your geyser and your geyser has temperature stratifications. So this particular organism grows well between 37 to say 42 degrees Celsius, which is quite a bit higher than most organisms. That's the environment it's comfortable in. And within your geyser, um, the modeling that was done by Dr. Toby Lowe, who is an engineering here, showed that there are areas within your geyser where it is that cool. So even if you're setting your geyser to 65 degrees Celsius, these organisms will come in and at the bottom where it's cooler might attach to the surfaces within a community, which we call a biofilm, and might persist there. So he did demonstrate that if you keep, if you keep your geyser above 65 degrees Celsius, he showed the trajectory of the organisms floating through that geyser will almost inevitably pass through areas that are so high in temperature that they will die. However, a lot of people in South Africa are regulating their water heaters or geysers below 40 degrees Celsius or at 40 degrees Celsius because it's more common, or they are switching their geysers off during the day. So what we really recommend from this study is that you do at least keep your geyser on for an hour before you shower. Um, we've just been, I've just listened to you speaking about ESCOM. We do not want to overload ESCOM, so we do not recommend that everybody keeps their geyser on at 65 degrees Celsius all day. But we're just recommending that the public do keep in mind that if you keep your geyser at a higher temperature, the pathogens may die. So maybe for an hour a day before you shower, switch it on, and it may be once a week for four hours to, to make sure that the pathogens are exposed to heat. You mentioned that this is an engineering um, task, that the way the geysers are engineered makes it conducive for this kind of bacteria to thrive. So is there some means of, uh, or any plans rather, to engineer geysers that will kill off these bacteria so we don't have to, uh, one, spend more power and electricity getting our, our geysers to that temperature where just the, by their design uh, make it Ill, Ill conducive for that bacteria to thrive? So, so this is um, an interesting future study that we that we would want to look at is looking at potentially mixing within geysers. Um, but uh, so, so it is a bit of a complicated question because what the study also showed is that even if your geyser is really well heated, you've got piping downstream from your geyser towards your taps, and that anyway has temperature stratification. So, so we're not sure about the answer to that question, but future research we'll look into different designs for certain. So just uh, to have it clear, I don't have to worry about, you know, having cold showers from now onwards. It's just a matter of preheating the geyser before I take a shower. Make sure you preheat your geyser before you take the shower. And definitely this is more recommendations for old age homes, people who are dealing with environments where there are sick people. So you do not need to worry for certain. <laughs> Thank you so much for that clarity. Uh, that was Wendy joining us uh, there for that update. Now,